The process of meiosis is pretty similar to mitosis. We start the same way. We start with a 2N cell. We even copy the DNA the same way to make identical copies of the chromosomes. And then, instead of dividing once to make two cells, we're going to end up dividing twice, and we're going to end up with four cells that are different from the original cell. Let's see how it happens when we draw it out. With the process of meiosis, we're going to start with the same 2N diploid cell that we saw at the beginning of mitosis, the same 2N cell. The process of meiosis begins the same way. First, we need to copy the DNA. We make an exact copy of each chromosome. Now we have two exact copies of the long red, two exact copies of the long green, two exact copies of the short red, and two exact copies of the short green. At this point, the chromosomes are going to be pushed to the middle of the cell. They're going to line up, just like they did in mitosis, with one important difference. In mitosis, the chromosomes lined up individually, all in a line. With meiosis, we're going to see that the homologous chromosomes remain associated with each other. So the two long chromosomes are going to remain associated with each other, and the short chromosomes are going to remain associated with each other. So it looks more like this. where the homologous chromosomes remain associated with each other, let something really interesting happen that occurs during meiosis, but not during mitosis. We're going to see something called crossing over, or homologous recombination, where the two homologous chromosomes actually switch a bit of their DNA. We're going to swap some DNA between the long red chromosome and the little matching long green chromosome, and we'll switch a little bit of DNA between the red and the green. So let me show you what that looks like. In homologous recombination, we swap some of the DNA between the homologous chromosomes. So we're going to switch a section between the red and the green here. A bit of the red is going to end up attached to the green chromosome, and some of that green ends up attached to the red. And we can see the same sort of thing happen between the short chromosomes. This is a process that only happens during meiosis, and it has the advantage of increasing diversity. Now, instead of just having all red or all green chromosomes, we have chromosomes that are green or red. We've mixed up some of the DNA that increases the diversity in a population. Diversity in populations is good because that allows the population to be able to flourish in more different types of conditions. Once the crossing over is complete, then this cell is going to divide. And it's going to divide down the middle. where everything above the dotted line will end up in one cell, and everything below the dotted line will end up in a different cell. The top cell is going to get this long green chromosome with a bit of red, and the short red with a bit of green. And the bottom cell is going to get this long red with a little green and the short green with a little red. But we're not quite done yet because in meiosis, we start with the 2N cell, copy the DNA, and divide twice. We just saw the first division. Now we're going to divide again. Each of these cells is going to divide down the middle. So 
so that we're going to have a total of four cells. Everything above the black line in this top cell goes over here. So we have a long green and a short red. Everything below the line goes down here. So that's going to be a long green with a little red and a short red with a little bit of green. Everything above the line here goes into this cell. So we've got a long red with some green on the end. We've got the short green. Then here we'll have the long red chromosome and the short green with a little bit of red. When we take a look at what we get at the end of meiosis, you can see we have four cells. These cells are one N, or haploid. They only have one copy of each chromosome. One copy of the long chromosome and one copy of the short chromosome. One copy of the long and one short. One long, one short, one long, one short. One copy of each chromosome. These are haploid cells, and these haploid cells are different from each other. If you look at them, all four of these cells are slightly different. None of them look the same as each other, and none of them look the same as the original cell. These are the cells that could now be gametes. We could take two gametes, so if this was a male, we could take one of these sperm and combine it with a 1N egg, and when we combine the 1N sperm with the 1N egg, we get a 2N offspring. An offspring that has two copies of each chromosome, one that came from its mother and one that came from its father.